I want to talk about not just what is crystal healing, but how does crystal healing actually work? And a lot of you know, I have a PhD. I'm trained as a scientist. Before Sage Goddess, I was a college professor. And um, so I really appreciate science and facts and information and data. And um, I'm not someone who's easily satisfied with like quick explanations. I want to know not just what, but how. And so I want to talk a little bit about the how of crystals. I've been working with crystals since I was about eight years old, seven, eight years old is when I got my first piece of amethyst. What a surprise that the person who loves purple and has purple hair would choose amethyst as her first crystal. Uh, so, and for ever since then, it's been a love affair. I got a job when I was, uh, as soon as I legally could at 15, and my first paycheck was to buy a crystal book. It was a little book with a crystal section and an astrology section. I, I've been doing what we do for a really long time. So the reason that crystals are so powerful comes down to an acronym, what we call the dominant oscillary rate. And I don't want to go too crazy scientific. This isn't a science class, but I also want to answer your the question you're probably holding, which is how do crystals even work? Every single crystal in your collection has a structure. And what is a crystal structure? Crystals are highly organized systems, okay? And there are six primary different crystal structures. Crystals have internal structures and they're highly organized and repetitive, unlike humans. <laughs> uh, so this crystal has a dominant oscillatory rate. The dominant oscillatory rate is the rate at which the energy of the crystal structure itself, the vibration of that structure and every structure has a different vibration and every vibration that it's aligned to has a different meaning so these crystals are doing very different things on my energy field right now because of the fact that they have two different structures and two different vibrations and frequencies and they're also two different colors and there is something called color magic right crystals that are pink and red are gonna activate more of what we call the heart chakra and crystals that are purple are gonna activate more of the crown chakra so there's a lot that goes into your choice of a crystal and you may say well no, Athena, I just bought that crystal because it's green and I like green things. Consciously, that may have been the process, but subconsciously there might be something in you going, I think my heart needs healing. And the green crystals and the pink crystals activate the heart chakra for healing. Crystals have a repeating structure, right? And a dominant oscillatory rate. They are stable, so they do not change over time. Humans do not have a stable structure. We do not have one single dominant oscillatory rate. We have multiple systems in our body, a digestive system, we have a circulatory system, right? A muscular skeletal system, and each one of our systems has its own dominant oscillatory rate. And that, that dominant oscillatory rate varies. When you're sick, it's one rate. When you're well, it's another rate. When the systems are in balance, they, they vibrate in a certain way. When they're out of balance, they vibrate another way. In other words, we are completely inconsistent and crystals are completely consistent. And this is why they are healers. Um, crystal cells also have something, and I wanna get the spelling right for you because I always screw up the spelling on this word, piezoelectricity. <laughs> and what that means is that they emit an electric charge. They do, and we are electrical beings. And so what you need to know about crystals and about yourself too, is that you have an energetic field, okay? If you stretch your arms out in front of you right now, that is kind of the boundary of your, what we call your personal energetic field. This is why we say personal space, right? Like anybody who's closer to the, to you than this is in your field and you're exchanging energy and frequency and like data with them. It's almost like downloading from their phone, okay? So anybody who's in, in your personal energetic field is operating on you for better or worse, right? They're bringing good energy in, that's great. They're bringing funk in, that's not great. The crystals have the same size energetic field. So anything, any crystal that is within two to four feet of you is again, modulating, regulating, integrating, healing your personal energetic frequency. A double terminated wand is two points, a point on each end. Now you'll have some double terminated wands that are equidistant up and down, right? The entire length. So they're the same width. And then you'll have some double terminated wands that have a wider end and a more narrow end. And those are called Vogels. Vogels are a very specific type of double terminated wand. And I'm gonna teach you today how to work with a Vogel because how many of you ever have pain? A single terminated wand gathers energy on the non-terminated side and directs it through the terminated side. So as a crystal healer, I can gather up energy from my heart and direct it to you. You can also gather up energy and direct it to me. Um, and you can also use this type of a wand, a single terminated, to activate grids. You can call in energy to support your intention for the grid and then use it like a pencil to activate a grid. The double terminated wands 
are doing something kind of different. I call them the freeway, okay? This is sending and receiving the whole time. It's a different flow of energy. This is a more directed singular flow of energy. This is a stronger um, and, and mutual double flow of energy. Okay, so is it gathering energy from me? Yes, but not as much because it's sending energy to me and then that energy is reverberating back out. So it's not as clean, crisp. Does that make sense? I can control what I'm gathering here. I can't control what I'm gathering here because of the termination. So if you wanna do more focused direct work, the other party bonus of this, and I will tell you, it's my favorite part of working with a wand like this. If you haven't had a massage with a single terminated wand, you are really missing out on one of the joys of life. Um, just a little bit of coconut oil or your favorite essential oil blend or solid perfume, whatever you work with, our balms at Sage Goddess are popular for this. In the palm of your hand, kind of rub it there. When you have a headache up the back of your neck, you know, like for me and my shoulder, getting into that shoulder blade area, feels really good at the base of the spine too, on either side of your spine. There's a lot of times, especially when we sit so much, I don't, I have ADHD, so I don't like to sit, but when we do sit a lot, you know, that energy kind of gets, again, stuck in those lower muscle groups and, and moving it with the wand is moving energy. Remember, pain is energy that isn't moving. So as a crystal healer, my number one job is to get that energy moving in your system. And by the way, stuck energy doesn't just cause physical discomfort. It can also cause emotional discomfort. It can cause sadness. It can cause um, a lack of mental clarity. You know, anytime there's stuck energy moving, you can tell you're discouraged, you're depressed, you're sad. You know, you just feel kind of like you've lost your mojo a little bit. And so moving energy through your system is the great gift of crystal healing. And it's gonna make a difference in you. Like I said, physically, mentally, spiritually and emotionally. Thank you for taking the time to be here as well. It was our pleasure. I love sharing what I know, especially if it can help you and support you in your healing process. 